Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice for radio. So today, it's finally time to talk about that Garboda card. You see, I've mentioned Garboda in a couple of videos so far, but we need to actually sit down and have a look at it in its own video, because I believe that this Garboda card is actually going to prove to be really quite good. So we need to have a good old chat about it. So... Garboda then. It doesn't block abilities. Because we've had multiple Garboda that do block abilities, nor is it the same as the one from Guardians Rising that does 20 damage for each item card in your opponent's discard pile. It might be that we finally got on a Garboda that's not going to define the format, but don't let that, don't let that put you off. There are a lot of things to like about this. Okay, mostly the ability, but that's all right. So starting off with the basics then, 120 HP for a stage 1 is fine. We'd rather have 130 like we see on Naganado, but it's not the end of the world. Retreat cost of 2 is annoying, but we did get that Air Balloon card recently, so actually it could be a whole heap worse. And weakness to fighting at the moment is okay. But as cards like Pikachu and Zekrom continue to see more and more play, there is every possibility that fighting weakness gets worse and worse as more and more people play fighting. Being a darkness Pokemon means you've got a uh, black market prism star. That's quite nice for being able to not give up a prize if you've got darkness energy attached. And you can use stuff like Nanu to swap in other Pokemon. You can use Weavile to move your darkness energy around, maybe after bringing it into play using Naganado. So that's not bad. But the ability is what we like here, and the ability is good. Now, our translation comes from the lovely Antoine Boulet, one of our very, very favorites here. And quite simply, what it does, if there is a stadium in play, once during your turn, you may leave your opponent's active Pokemon poisoned. Cool. Automatic poison with a stadium in play. Make no mistake about it. This might sound fine. It's actually really, really good. It's also quite reminiscent of Skuntank G. Once during your turn, before you attack, if you have a stadium in place, it's slightly different, you may use this power, each active Pokemon, yours and your opponent's, other than Pokemon SP, now poisoned. That's actually good. Now, Skuntank was actually a pretty good deck. I believe it. It won Worlds in Juniors, or at least did incredibly well in Worlds in Juniors. Did get printed as a Worlds deck, which is quite good. I don't know if this is quite at that level, but we've got enough poison tricks at the moment that this is something we need to actually take really seriously. Automatic poison is good. Automatic special conditions generally are very, very good. Now, there are some obvious ones. I told you about Toxtricity V Max recently, whereby it does a natural, not that great 160 for free energy. But if the defending Pokemon is poisoned, it does 240. Clearly, in a deck like that, this Garboda becomes amazing. Similarly, Toxtricity V, the newer one, 90 damage. If the defending Pokemon is poisoned, 180. And we don't have better ways for poison here. We've got a stage 2 vial plume that lets you do any non-paralysis special condition. But it's a coin flip and a stage 2. You do get to go sleep or burn or confusion if you prefer. But it's a coin flip on a stage 2. Let's not get terribly excited. Other than that, we've got a bunch of Pokemon that poison you when you attack them like Quillfish. But you're assuming your opponent is going to attack into it and it just gets awkward. You might be giving up a prize. I'm, I'm not a huge fan. We've, of course, just got attacks that poison. The Toxtricity V, the new one, does 20 damage plus poison for one energy. But let's be honest here. It's, um, it's not looking amazing if, if we're perfectly honest with ourselves. No, I think when it comes to putting poison down, this is the best one. And the great news is we've got some really good poison tricks at the moment. Surviper was lost to the rotation. Basic Pokemon does 10 more damage for poison. And Verbank City Gym was lost to a rotation a little while ago. 
two more damage counters for poison. Both still legal in expanded, though in expanded, hypnototic laser is better for poison. Although it is an item card, so it is struggling with item lock, and it is single use, so maybe this could be better. The thing is, we've got the Toxicroak that came around in Sword and Shield. And the Toxicroak from Sword and Shield increases the number of damage counters for poison by two. So it's double to Viper. Yes, it's a stage one, but it's double rather than just single. So actually, yeah. Now you're at three, and this does stack. It does not say three damage counters for poison. It says two more damage counters for poison. This is significantly better. So maybe you play uh, basically anything and then you just put these on the bench. I mean, there is a possibility here that you just go for stuff like Lily's Pokedoll or just giant Pokemon and you're not giving up prizes. Maybe, you know, Shedinja becomes your friend. You can attach it as a tool that means you don't give up a prize or you give up one fewer prize. And of course, Black Market Prism Star also your friend here. And you just do your damage during the game using Garboda and Toxicroak. I'm not saying that's what you should do. I'm saying that actually becomes a legitimate option. Don't forget the muck from Team Up, whereby if your opponent evolves or devolves, they're still affected by poison. And don't forget about Dust Island, a stadium card, bearing in mind you need a stadium in play, whereby whenever a player your opponent who's poisoned, or you, I suppose, tries to use a trainer card to switch out a poison Pokemon, the new Pokemon is poisoned to the same extent. So if you're using Toxicroak and they've got, you know, seven poison, seven between turns, then they're still poisoned, the new one, and they're taking seven poison between turns. There are so many good things with this. Any time... You've got a Pokemon that deals more damage with poison. This is your boy. And then you can just keep rolling of other stuff. I mean, if you can put a bunch of other special conditions on there, why not just play around with the Alolan Grimer from Team Up? We got twin energy now, so you can pay the attack cost in a single energy. And then you're doing 20 damage base, which admittedly not that high, but 50 more for each special condition. So you bring in some other special conditions here and just go absolutely nuts. This could be fun. Any deck that wants to play around with poison, this is automatically the best option. Yes, I know we still got Koga's Trap, which poisons and confuses, but it's also your only supporter card for the turn. If that was a great option, we'd all be playing it. I'm not saying you shouldn't play it. I'm just saying it's not a phenomenal option. And the best part is that this is one of those Pokemon that's just going to keep being good and getting better. This might not always see a huge amount of play, but anytime this isn't seeing play, it is purely going to be because we don't have the right poison tricks around at the moment. There are plenty of opportunities for new stuff to be revealed. Any card like Toxicroak that helps poison, any card like Alolan Grimer that deals more damage for each special condition, any card that does more damage for the amount of poison, like Toxtricity, they are all going to love this. And it works as a tech. It's a stage one. We've got Ditto Prism Star. So what you could do is just play one of these with Ditto Prism Star. And here's the thing, right? I've spent the whole video up to now talking about all the different tricks you can do. Here's the real trick with this. 10 more damage between turns. That's the key. That's the secret. Even if you're not playing around with Toxtricity and Muck and Dust Island and all of that, we know that Shrine of Punishment is great. Shrine of Punishment puts one damage counter on each GX and GX between turns. We know the Vitality Band is going to see a bunch of play. It lets you do an extra 10 damage. Why not just use this for the extra poison? When I say play it in a deck with Ditto, which will rotate a couple months after this comes out, but we'll have a little bit of a window. I don't mean just in some poison-focused deck. I mean anytime you're almost doing enough damage, but not quite, this will poison them and do extra damage. And this isn't just against EXs and GXs. It's not just against basics or any of that. It's any Pokemon, unless they've got some kind of immunity or your opponent actually plays a Galarian Rapidash, and as we're looking at the moment, 
and I'm not exaggerating when I say this, I literally haven't seen a deck playing Galarian Rapidash, and I look at more deck lists than most. As for the whole, you've got to have a stadium card in play, don't worry about it. The only issue here is if your opponent plays a Chaos Swell. Except Chaotic Swell isn't going to worry you. The thing is, Chaotic Swell, right, your opponent plays it down, and then if you play a stadium, it gets discarded and nothing happens. And then there will be no stadium in play. Fine. Go for it. You see, we don't really have great ways of getting rid of stadiums at the moment, unless your opponent actually plays Faber. So you play a bunch of stadiums, and in the unlikely event your opponent does play a Chaotic Swell, you got two options. Option number one, leave it in play, do the poison. Option number two, do the poison, then play your own stadium over it. This is great. As for the attack, I mean, one darkness, two colorless, 80 damage, it's not good. You're hitting weakness on all these Pokemon at the moment that are psychic. Psychic Pokemon are now weak to darkness. So if your opponent starts rocking something like Indeedee, you are hitting weakness. And you've got Weavile, and you've got Twin Energy. It, it's an alright one to pay, but no. You're not playing Garboda for the attack. You're playing Garboda for the ability, and the ability's great. There we go. But now, ladies and gentlemen... Oh wait, no, we need to give it a Wossy score. Four Wossies. I love this. And I can see it being even better than that. There are a million different fancy tricks you can do with this, but actually at the end of the day, it's just a stage one that does 10 damage to your opponent and then does 10 damage after every turn. It's really fun. Do remember, when you go to time, after turn three of time, there is no between turns, the poison won't go on, you have been warned. For now, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is brilliant, but I'd love to know what you think about it. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash plays, where you can find out about a whole bunch of games that don't have Pokemon in, but are awesome nonetheless. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.